Hello everybody. Today I wanted to go over the top most Googled medical questions, starting with the first one, which is lots and lots of questions about strep throat. Um, not what does strep throat feel like or how what does strep throat look like, but um, how contagious is it and how long does it last? So strep throat comes from the group A strep bacteria in the throat, not to be confused with uh, group B strep, B below, that ladies might have in regards to uh, childbirth. So the big question, is it contagious and how long does it last? So yes, it's contagious. Um, and how long does it last? It really uh, depends on how quickly you're getting on antibiotics and if you're getting better with your antibiotics. The only way to know if you have strep throat is by, uh, a, it's the swab that the providers use and or the nurses and they get swab on both sides, the back of the throat, and then it gets put into a little plastic cylinder and gets sent down to the lab. And then that will determine whether or not you're positive for strep throat. If you um, get on antibiotics and you continue to get worse, high fever, just worse. I don't even want to name the symptoms because it might be that someone says, but oh, she didn't say uh, chest shortness of breath. So therefore it must not be from my strep. So just if you're feeling worse, go in. So it is very contagious. It is spread by uh, droplets into the air, coughing, sneezing, sharing utensils, sharing drinks. I just want to pop back in here real quick and clarify something. The questions that people were asking on Google regarding uh, strep had to do with strep throat, but strep can also be on the skin. That bacteria can be on the skin in the form of uh, impetigo, like with children who get it in various places around their face and mouth on their bottom and um, adults who get abscesses or children who get abscesses. So same with group B strep. It isn't just gonna stay in one place. Both of them can go to different places. Um, remember Jim Henson who created the Muppets? He died at age 53 from untreated strep throat. He then, Jim Henson, it's also theorized that Mozart and George Washington also may have died. For sure Jim Henson did, but. Uh, the other two may have died from strep throat that um, became invasive into their bodies. They became critically ill and passed away. It is rapid and it is merciless. So just like everything, if you think something is wrong, uh, get it checked out. Better to be safe than sorry. The next most common question that is Googled is what's bronchitis and is bronchitis contagious? A lot of the questions have to do is, is this contagious? So sinus infection was the other one. So a sinus infection just of itself or someone next to you is coughing with bronchitis in itself, it's not contagious. What's contagious is what you got sick with before the bronchitis yeah. set in. Um, RSV, uh, flu, common cold, and now they have bronchitis, which is the irritation inflammation of the large bronchioles. The illness ahead of the bronchitis is what's contagious. And I have heard people getting lots of different medications for bronchitis. I've had it many times because I have asthma. I never got anything to resolve the bronchitis. It just kind of had to run its course. The it's last one is uh, about epistaxis, which is um, another, the medical term for a nosebleed. So people did ask um, a lot about how to stop a nosebleed. And I think that that's kind of um, a lot of questions result uh, around that because that has changed. The days of doing this and putting your head back or laying down or, or we don't do that anymore. You don't want to do that. You want to go forward a little bit. You don't have to totally bend forward, but if you do, it's better than going back. You are going to pinch it right here and you're going to pinch really hard with a nosebleed. And you want to do this for five minutes. Now it's better if you pinch your own nose because when someone comes up and says, here, let me do this for you, it really can hurt a lot because they're um, put a lot more pressure on there, on your nose than you probably would. And either way, pressure is going to help stop. It. Start with five minutes. Don't peek and see. Is it still bleeding? I'm going to let go. I'm going to let go. Just go ahead and put pressure here. If after five or six minutes of constant pressure, leaning forward a little bit, 
you don't want it to go down, you let go. Is it still bleeding? Put pressure on it again. And it's okay then at that point to go ahead and put a bag of peas here, an ice pack here. Get a couple of ice cubes and put them in a baggie and lay that here while you're pinching, okay, right here at the top. None of this is comfortable, but that is the proper way to help a nosebleed clot and stop. Now, if a nosebleed continues on and it is a massive amount, you have to go into the ER. And there are people who even have to get cauterization and other things done. Um, but that's what, what's happening there with the nosebleed. And back to the other question about sinus infections. Again, there's three kinds, fungal, bacterial, and viral with your sinus infection. What's contagious is what you had before the sinus infection settled in. Uh, RSV, a cold, um, it, you know, some type of um, viral illness, um, and then now you've got uh, a bacterial infection that you need to have antibiotics for. Um, the standard, so they say, kind of like when you look up how long is my cold gonna last, seven to 10 days, and it always seems like that on 10 and a half days, you're finally turning the corner when you think, um, I'm just feeling worse. But if you have all this sinus pressure, pain, headache, maybe some bleeding, you, um, the only way you're gonna know if it's, uh, needs, if uh, antibiotics are required is if you go in to see your health practitioner. Okay, I hope this was helpful with those basic questions. Oh, and a, another big popular one was what's monkeypox? So I'm gonna do something just on monkeypox because I find it to be really interesting. And I will also start um, breaking down some really fun questions that uh, people ask per state. Okay, like one state asks a lot about hemorrhoids, that's their top question, where another state asks a lot about monkeypox, another one asks a lot about insomnia. So these are just kind of interesting things that each state provides the most medical research for themselves to research the most medical questions that they might have. Have a good day.